Hey y'all, Ileana Silver Dragon. We're back with another part of Let's Play Star Stable. So, um, I tried another mate outfit. I'm, I'm, I'm not good at making outfits. Just, okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk to Conrad. Look, a first rate iron girl for barbecues. I wish you many pleasant moments by the fire. Wait, a forest fire? Oh my, my, those tourists. I have to say, I hope they learned an important lesson. Okay, let's go back to the Veildale Forest. Um, yeah, I spent most of my shillings getting this outfit, and truthfully a lot of coins, but oh well. Uh, Veildale, Veildale, Veildale. Okay. Okay. Um Why not? <laughs> Why? Okay. Oops, ran into a log. Oh, what a grill. I can see the stripes on the grilled sausages already. But before we begin grilling, we need to build a stable foundation. Wooden stones should be easy to find around here. I saw an abandoned summer house a short way away from here. You mean, directly in front of you? Maybe we can find some stones there, or maybe some old logs lying around in the forest, what we can use. That we can use, at least. Log. I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Oh, speaking of sneezing. Speaking before sneezing seems to help it go away. Strange. Oops, oops, oops. Oh. Oops. Well, can't jump out there. Oh well. It's a good thing you have such a strong and noble horse. This will be perfect for building a stove. Excellent stones and logs are the perfect size. Now we can build the stove. The logs can be used as benches and the stones are the foundation for the stove top. To top it all off, the grill. Okay. Over here. And I need to just mount. No? Cool. What a splendid stove. Perfect for a barbecue. Now the fire is safe. In hindsight, I can see how irresponsible you are when we tried to grill on the ground. This has turned out better than I thought. 
What a difference it makes to get sent on comfortable benches instead of the hard ground. We should have listened to Gresham. She was such a clever girl. I wonder who she gets that from. <laughs> I have nothing to give you in return, but I hope you and your friends will come here for your barbecues and maybe even build new stoves. Helga and I have learned our lesson, no doubt about that. Cool. Um. Now let's go over to Nilmer's to talk to Isabel. I don't like this quest, but oh well. here. <sighs> Hello, honey pie. I'm sure you're wondering why I'm crouching in the bushes. Well, you see, if I told you, the surprise would be ruined. But for you, my dear, I can explain. I'm preparing for my grand entrance before I swoop in and steal the show. You haven't heard. It just is holding auditions for his tremendous traveling show. Exciting. Why aren't you online? I must confess, I'm simply not ready. I've dreamed of the day I'd get to work with the wonderful wizard Idris, but now the day has come. I believe in you. I believe in you, Isabel. Oh, sweetie, you're too kind. Good grief, what am I doing hiding in the trees and fretting? Diggory and I are born performers. Sure. Still don't like him. Never have. Never will. The greatest traveling show this land has ever seen will soon begin. But first, it is time for the auditions. Yes, it is me, the Anastasia Silverglade. The auditions are over, darling. You found your star. Interesting. Your attempt at impressing me has succeeded in doing the exact opposite. Next, please. <clears throat> Gadgets and gizmos, trinkets and widgets, whatever you need making or fixing, Big Bonnie is here to do it. This is a talent show, not a job interview. Next. Sir, I have heard that you intend to execute a traveling show around Jorvik. I must remind you that you are under the jurisdiction of Law 782B that is forbidden to... Run along, monsieur. Your song and dance does not impress the great Idris. Next. I do think this is a pretty horse. Halt. Stop everything. Everyone else can leave. The auditions are over. This horse. His markings. How magical. What is your name, mon vieux? Both. Esben? What a splendid name. Would you so kindly grace us with your presence and take center stage in our glorious traveling show? Yes, at long last, I have found the star that I have been looking for. One and all, feast your eyes on this wondrous being. Aw. It is a pretty horse. I don't know why everyone complains about the nab strubbers. I love them. I just, ugh. I can't believe it. He picked a horse over us? You have a full of horses. It's quite an impressive horse. Whose side are you on? You could get the same effect by painting a black spot on a white horse, for heaven's sake. Like in those Pippi movies. I can introduce you to Idris. No, why? Mm. Did you perhaps come to see this divine horse that has graced us with his presence? He will mesmerize all the people of Warwick once the traveling show begins. Who is this stranger dressed in circus attire? A competitor, perhaps? No one can compete with the ring, Grand Ringmaster Idris. What is it? There is no time for small talk. I have something extraordinary to show all of you, Eric, and it can't wait. 
I must begin my traveling show immediately. Three locations, three unique spectacles, one extraordinary talent. Do, did you have something to ask me? Mr. Idris, it is an honor to make your acquaintance. I am the one and only Isabel Fig, illustrious, illusionist, and spectacular street magician. Pick a card, any card, in just ten seconds I can. Ah, uh-huh, card tricks. How quaint. I'm afraid I was looking for someone with real magical abilities, but you can watch as a member of the audience as we begin our performance starting in Jarlheim. But magic isn't real, it's all an illusion, and how can a horse be a better performer than me? <laughs> Ugh. You are more than welcome to follow the footsteps of the traveling show and learn from this beautiful horse the intricacies of a true spectacle. But for now, I must bid you adieu. It just doesn't know what he's talking about. What can I learn from a dumb horse anyway? Unless... He was putting me up for a challenge. Yes, that's it. Challenge accepted. I'll prove to Idris just how remarkable Isabel Fig and Diggory are. Then he'll be begging me to be a star of the show. Hmm. Oh well, must be done. Yarlheim. Okay. Nope. What? Oh, these were lights, not sparkles. Ignore me. Two little bunnies came chasing after the hare. Welcome to my traveling performance. It's not a spectacle without the spectators. Run forth and gather all the little lemmings. Eight should do the trick. Hi, Derek. Thanks for the invite. I hope that horse will be in the show. Who are you? I don't know you. Sounds like fun. Is that beautiful horse performing? Oh, oh, that reminds me. Um, I got to the next part of the Sunfield Farm, so I'll probably try to do that too. I've always wanted to see one of Idris's shows. I'm coming, but there better be butter popcorn with caramel and chocolate. Hey, are you up there? Yep. Thank you for inviting me. Over here. A traveling show? Count me in. Yes, I'll be there. I can't wait. <clears throat> sure, why not? That magician guy gives me the heebie jeebies, though. You and me both, dude. Okay, back down here. You managed to invite all these people. Spectacular. One and all, kindly take a seat. The spectacle shall commence in the blink of an eye. Okay.
Nope, the horse doesn't like to be ridden. Good grief, poor Espen is scared out of his spots. The first show went terribly. Whatever will Aegis do now? How disastrous. Espen is shaken to the core. All because of Jin's. I think that's Jin. Cluelessness. Now Aegis will have to find a replacement rider. But fear not, I can save the day. What was that, you cheeky monkey? You think Espen is fancy? Oh, Diggory, don't tell me you're warming up to him. Now we really must console Idris after the catastrophe of his first show. And I can let him know that I will graciously take In's place, Jin's place as Esben's rider. Where's my horse? Oh. Idris, I'm so sorry about the mishap of your first show. It's clear that Jin is not fit to ride Esben. So I humbly volunteer as a replacement. I shall be the star of the show. Are you doubting the integrity of my grand traveling show? There's no need to replace Jin. He's perfectly capable. Espen merely had some stage fright. Mm-hmm. Let us not talk of this any longer. We must move on to the next spectacle. The show must go on. Onward to Wolf Hall Inn we go. Join us, if you please. Uh, I don't feel like taking a... um. What's it called? Trailer. So, riding we go. Over here. Okay, um, I might as well play some music since it's a kind of a long ride. This is The Time Is Now by Lisa Peterson from Star Stable. Isabel, what a delight to see you both here. Let us not speak at the fourth, for the next spectacle how shall amaze us all. You, prepare Esben for the show. I'm too busy. He needs to be fed and watered. There's a well and some hay up the slope. And probably could have gone the other way. Oh well. is usually a reputation shop. Oh, you only need to be neutral with everyone. Strange. Because there's really no way to, um... I didn't dismount. 
Oh, that filled my bucket, not what I need. Man. Don't fall, please. What am I doing? Ah, oh, come on. Yes, I'm not very no observant. Really? What am I doing? Oh, okay. Probably need to dismount. Or do the water first. Oh, or just click. Esben is all ready for a star performance, but Jin isn't anywhere in sight. One and all, kindly take a seat and this spectacle shall begin. Okay. Aw, poor thing. Serves them right. Diggory, my sweet pea, where are you going? We have to find my dearest Diggory. He ran after Esben. The cants have gotten far. Quickly, find Esben. Rendezvous at Silvergate Winery as soon as possible. The show will begin shortly. Ha 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 Thank goodness for that. I really don't like Jen either. Oops. Where are you going? No, Diggory, bad monkey. You shouldn't fraternize with the enemy. Wait, watch. Diggory is calming Esben down. What's that, dear? You want to be Esben's friend? But he's the reason we're not performing. Doesn't that upset you? I suppose you do look sweet together. Like something straight out of a movie. Or a video game. How can we guide Esben to Silverblade Winery? He's too shaken up to walk alone. What did you say, Diggory? You think I should ride Esben back to the winery? Yes, Diggory, of course you can ride on his back with me. If that is okay with you, Esben. We simply must go to Silverglade Winery. We cannot leave Idris in his traveling show waiting. I don't know how long this will take, so might as well continue with the music. Oops, forgot they thought. I did some research on the so-called wonder snap shopper while I had the chance, just to see what all this fuss is about, you know? But let me tell you, it was fascinating. Well, duh, the, uh, just the genetics that are involved in the nav shepherds is absolutely incredible. I'm gonna stop now before I get into that because I am a genetic... Mm. 
Nap shepherds have been admired for many years. Did you know that kings and queens of long ago used to ride with them in their coronations? They expressed beauty, I think that said. Anyway, the genetics that are involved in this, so, they call it joie de vivre. I'm sure Idris can pronounce it better than me. If I actually got one of my French classes, I probably could too. <laughs> but um, I think it's called the leopard print gene. Go. And it's just, it's absolutely incredible. The, the co-dominant genes that are needed to make it. The unique coat of the nap strippers is based on a complex genetic makeup. There are five variants of their cutters, but only one is completely spotted. Because of their rarity, people tend to view them as magical. Man, I can't read through that. But yeah, like that saying, it's so complex genetics, and it's so amazing how that your genetics... <clears throat> Napsterbers are said to be of sharp minds and even able to learn tricks. I suppose it makes sense that Esmond is the star of Idris' show. Despite his performance so far, he has some star potential. Maybe. Like, anything with co-dominant genes are so incredible in my book. But he'll never be good as darling duel is a bone degree, will he, boy? I just, I like it. I love it. I just. <laughs> I could go on and on about genetics. I, can you tell I want to be a scientist? <laughs> well, I'm not so much a scientist. I really want to go into veterinary medicine. And this game has really made me want to do equine medicine. <laughs> Perhaps I'm being too hard on him, diggory. I just want Idris to realize that we should be the main performance. But genetics are definitely something I love in biology. It's just... It's something... Genetics and evolution, they are my absolute favorite things to learn about. I just... Ugh. Like phylogenet phylogenetic trees? Oh my goodness, I could look at them all day. Aha! I see you've found the star of the show, and in the nick of time. Esmond seems particularly tranquil. How interesting. At long last you have returned. My mind was fraught with worry about the fate of the traveling show until now. Unfortunately, I have been left with no other option than to cancel the show. I fear that my zester, jester Jin doesn't harmonize well with El Esmond. He holds back the talent and skill of our star. It just, I had the most perfect solution to your problem. Speak then, illusionist. What did you have in mind? Well, Diggory here has developed a bond with the lovely Esben. They're practically inseparable, right, dear? Precisely. I also think Esben would flourish if he had his best friend with him during his performances. But a monkey can't ride a horse alone, so I would need to be a Diggory, of course. Please, Idris, let Diggory and I perform in the show. That is quite an interesting proposal indeed. Allow me to ponder the possibility. Evidently, not only has the primate developed a close bond with the horse, but the wily illusionist can communicate with the monkey too. Your proposal is accepted. We have found our replacement rider, thus the show will go on. Thank you so awfully much, Idris. Diggory and I are honored to have this incredible opportunity. The honor is mine. We did it, Diggory! We're finally performing in Idris' glorious traveling show. Isn't it a dream come true? You're right, sweetie. Performing with Esben will be a treat. After researching the Nabstrapper and the brief experience I had riding him, I realized how flippant I was being. Esben is lovely. I really can see what all the fuss is about. My apologies for interrupting your fascinating exchange, but I've just gotten word that the Baroness will be in the audience for our grand finale. The stakes are higher than ever before. Are you certain you can fill this role? I promise, with all my heart, to put the most awe-inspiringly magical show that Jorvik has ever seen. Ileana, what do you say of this? No comment. Mostly because I don't like you. Um, fine. Your enthusiasm is uplifting. I look forward to the final show with bated breath. Very well, Isabel Fig, the stage is yours. My splendid traveling show shall commence. All thanks to the conjurer Isabel and the particular primate degree, and of course, not forgetting the lovely dove that brought us all brought it all together. Little dove. So help me you better be talking about that horse. 
The final performance of my traveling show is upon us. Kindly take a seat and prepare yourself for the most divine performance yet. Third time's a charm. Got that right. Okay. Oh, hi, Tan. Didn't notice you there. That was the most amazing spectacle I have seen. Oh my, we did it! Did you see how wonderful we were all together? Even the Baroness herself came to me after the show and praised us. She absolutely adores Esben, and so do I. It seems like you're bonding already. I can't help it. I have a soft spot for him. We couldn't possibly be torn apart now. And darling Diggory is head over heels for him, aren't you? Oh, Diggory, you are an angel. And yes, Esmond, you too. It'll be the three of us from now on. The tremendous theatrical trio, Isabel, Diggory, and Esmond. I'm so glad I finally got what I wanted. I mean, that we got what we wanted. You are a gem, Eliana. Without you, I would never have had the courage to approach the incredible Idris. And Diggory and I would have never become friends with Esmond. Thank you ever so much. Okay. Hmm. This might work well with, um, what's his name? Ghostlight. Now let's go over to the Sunfield Farm so I can continue with the Borrowing a Mill quest, I believe it is. Sunfield, Sunfield, Sunfield. Oh wow, this went on a lot longer. Mm, it's already over 30 minutes. Oh well, this shouldn't take too long. Hello, Ileana. I have a problem. A bit of a first world problem, if you might say. But I think I need your help if you have a little time. You see, now I'm able to harvest so many seeds, I need access to a mill so we can grind them into flour. Jacob Goldsboro owns two mills. Do you think you could ask him if we could borrow one of them if he's not using it himself? You could? Excellent. Thanks. Ask Jacob if he can lend the mill to us and let me know what he says. Uh, I'll ride there. I uh, will play the music.
Hello there, Eliana. Philip Sunfield wants to borrow the mill. Ha! Of course it's fine. Philip Sunfield is a trustworthy guy, so he can absolutely borrow the mills whenever he needs to. Let him know that it's totally okay for him to use the mills. After all, that's what friends are for. See you soon, Eliana, and say hello to the rest of the Sunfield family. Back to the Sunfield farm. Hello, how did it go? We can use Jacob's mills? Fantastic. That solves a lot of problems here, that's for sure. Thanks so much for all your help, Eliana. And a pair of pants. Oh, okay, they actually fit with the um outfit. Fun. Anyway, that's definitely all I have time for. Um, hmm. I might head up to Fergrove and do everything but the quest that opens Mistfall, because that's a long... Oh no, I might do Paddock Island first, since there's really no long-term things except for the daily quest and races. Then I'll do Fergrove. Then I'll do Cape West. Hmm. Then I think I'll go back to South Hoof. I do want to get all the side quests done before going to, um... Alex here. Anyway, thank y'all for watching. Um, tomorrow is update day, and about that, um, so pretty much it's almost confirmed at this point that we're gonna be seeing Lisa's room next update, and of course I haven't saved Lisa in this account yet, so if it comes down to it, um, I will be logging into my story account to show you all the quest because, you know, I don't want to um, have to wait for the new quest or no room or whatever until, like, which is probably going to be a few months down the line of me saving Lisa. So if we need to save Lisa first, I will be in Elvira Ghost Hunter tomorrow. It really just depends on how everything will go. And that's, of course, if the hurricane hits, bef that's if the hurricane doesn't hit and knock out the power. It, I, I really don't know. It's all up in the air at the moment. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see y'all later. Bye.